the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. Hello learners, welcome to the Kaduna Strait Ministry of Education, e-learning, radio and television program. Welcome to the geography class. I am your geography teacher. My name is Wazy Jeremiah Akos. Our topic for today is elementary land survey. During the course of our lesson today, this is what we'll be doing. We'll be looking at the definition of terms. We we'll also look at the importance of land survey. We we'll also look at the branches of land survey. And finally, we'll be looking at types of land survey. Let us proceed to the definition of terms. We'll be looking at the definition of terms to help, under, help us understand what we're doing on elementary land survey. The first thing we'll look at is survey. Survey is the operation of finding the contour, dimensions, positions, or other particulars on any part of the Earth's surface, whether land or water. I take it again. The operation of finding the contour, dimensions, positions, or other particulars on any part of the Earth's surface, whether land or water. Now, we know that those features are there, be them on land, on water. But when we talk about finding out, it means that there are specific things that we're looking at. And it has to do with contours, dimensions, and positions. This refers to the fact that there are measurements involved. When we say land, what do we mean? We're referring to the part of the Earth's surface that is not covered by water. Land survey, therefore is a process by which measurement of land is made and then represents such measurements by tables, plans, or layouts for specific purpose. You take these measurements and you present them either in tables, in plans, or layouts depending on the purpose that these measurements have been taken. It can also mean the measuring and mapping out of the position, size, and boundaries of an area of land. Now, we'll look at, if you look clearly on the board, especially for those of us watching on TV, you'll see a diagram. This diagram is trying to show us what a plan looks like. And in the plan, you'll see a table with grids. That is a table when we said that such measurements are represented in tables or in plans. That is a plan that is drawn on the board and the L shape we have on the board is a plan while the table beneath it is an example of one of the table that is used in land surveying. The next picture we have is a picture of a land surveyor taking measurements. It's a direct picture showing a land surveyor taking measurements and he has some tools with him. The yellow triangle that is standing that is standing is called a trifold stand. There are other types of instruments. There are several types of instruments that you use on the stand, the common one being the theodolite. We'll continue our lesson. We look at the importance of land survey. Why is land survey important? Why do we have expensive equipment to carry out these measurements on land and in some cases on water? We have one, we have area of land. Land survey helps us to determine the area of a place. For example, a market, garden, and school. To determine the area of land, you don't just go to a place and say, oh, okay, I'm going to build a market here. You have to measure what do we need in that market? How much land do we require to build such a market? So you do some surveying work to be able to determine the size of the land to be used for whatever construction purpose that you have. Number two, position of construction. It helps to set on the ground the position of construction 
or any engineering work. Land is available and you have decided what you're going to build on the land. For example, you have a piece of land and you want to build a house on the piece of land. You can't say, okay, because it's my land and I want to build a house, I can build any house I want to build. No. The house has to be, the position or where the house is placed on the land has to be determined. And this is part of the work of a land surveyor through the process of surveying. Number three, we have production of maps. It can also help to determine the production of maps. Because land surveying involves measurements of dimension and contours, among other factors, it helps you determine, okay, where is this hill? Where is this river? Where is this valley? Because measurements have been taken, you can actually pick such measurements from the ground and represent them exactly on paper. Number four, Position of certain features. It can be used to determine the relative positions of features of the Earth. These features can be natural or artificial so that they may be collectively represented on the map. We have, like in Kaduna here, we have River Kaduna. When we have land surveyors, they can tell you the location of certain places in relation to River Kaduna. You can say, oh, the government house is north of River Kaduna or south of it using location. It can give you exact dimensions. That such dimensions can include distance either in meters or kilometers. It gives you not just the distance but the direction. Number five, we have feasibility studies. It is used as a basis of feasibility studies in any construction work to be carried out on the surveyed land. Now, when we say feasibility, you're looking at these projects that we want to carry out. Is it possible for us to carry it out and complete it? So when you do a feasibility study, you're trying to find out that whether the work you want to do can be carried out successfully. So land survey helps us to find out if such work, construction work, can be completed successfully on a piece of land. Number six, we have land security. Now, this is a common feature for most of us, or should I say all of us, because like it says here, it says it gives the owner of the land security which can be used to obtain loan as soon as certificate of occupancy is given. Certificate of occupancy, which we commonly call CO. You hear your parents talking about CO, or they say C of O, certificate of occupancy. A certificate of occupancy is a document that shows that the land in question belongs to you. Now, you can have other documents but it does not mean that it is a certificate of occupancy. A certificate of occupancy has several documents attached to it, including the cadastral plan of such an area in a government reserve, especially when it is a government reserved area. Now, these are the importance of land surveying. at the branches of land surveying. When we say branches, we're referring to the areas of land surveying. We don't just survey to find out if we can build a school or if we can build a house. There are several areas, especially when it has to do with different specializations. As, as a geography student, you use land surveying. As a town planner, they use land surveying, but you apply such surveying methods differently. So we look at what are the different applications or the different branches of surveying. Number one, we have topographic survey. From the word topographic, you know it has to do with maps. What does it say? We say in this method, the survey works are based on the different locations of the main natural 
or artificial features of the earth, such as rivers, hills, valleys, villages, and road. I take it again. In this method, the survey works are based on the different locations of the main natural or artificial features of the earth, such as rivers, hills, valleys, villages, and roads. Now, when we say topographic, we're referring to landform features, whether they are man-made or artificially made. When we say artificial, we're talking about construction works that has been carried out by man. When it is natural, we have rivers, we have valleys, we have, in some cases, forests, desert areas. These are naturally occurring features. When we talk of man-made features, we have roads, be it the tarred road, the real roads, all these ones are roads. We can have constructions like buildings, schools, settlements. All these are classified under topographic survey and they are a branch of land surveying. Number two, we have what we call the engineering survey. The engineering surveys include all aspects involved in the preparation of engineering work to its executions. The features mainly considered are roads, channels, rails, dams, and other construction works. Now, during the course of our study, some of us might decide to go to the higher institution and study a course that we call land surveying. In the field of engineering, you find out that they tell you, especially when it has to do with so, um, construction, they tell you that the first engineer on a site is the land surveyor. So all these big construction companies that we have, when they get a contract from either private organizations or the government, they are asked to develop a piece of land for one purpose or the other. The first thing they do is to send a land surveyor to survey the land. For example, let's say a government or an individual wants to build a university. He has already acquired a large piece of land and they send the company now sends in a surveyor. The surveyor now checks, okay, this is a university. We have a general idea. They have a plan of what they want to build. He will check the land. He will say, no, we're not going to have the faculties here because they're big buildings. The land is not very good. We'll put them on this side. We'll put the lighter buildings here. He will measure and check to make sure that the works are carried out and they are carried out well and they will last. So a survey work are done before the work begins, during the course of the work, right up to the end of the work. Number three, we have what we call the geodetic survey. These are high accuracy surveys, mainly concerned with the shape of the earth or position fixing of points which provides control for lower accuracy survey. It might sound a bit technical, but let me break it down for you. You know we have satellites in the atmosphere, and that is why we're able to get signals from the sky. Um, some of you might be familiar with the word GPS, the Global Positioning System. This is enabled because of the satellite we have roaming in the um, space all over the Earth. Now, this Satellites help us to give exact position. That is why when you have your phones, they can be able to track you down because of the GPS that is enabled by your phone. This method is used for surveying. You get a position from the satellite, and then it helps you to position some sensitive construction works depending on who is using it. You can use it for defense purposes, military people, people in high security or special buildings. All these are part of the geodetic survey. Number four, we have what we call geological survey. Now, geological is from the word geology, and we know it has to do with the study of the earth, not the surface within the earth's crust. We said these have to do with features associated with the inner structure of the earth. For example, type of soil, water table, and mineral content of soil. These are just small, small introductory areas as it has to do with our level. 
Some of you might finish secondary school and go to the university and study a course we call geology. During the course of your study, you will do more in-depth study and you will be involved in geological surveys. Number five, geographical surveys. This is a survey of geography which has to do with us directly. What does it entail? It entails research. It involves the surveying of natural and man-made features of the earth. Natural and man-made features of the earth, which includes markets, roads, schools, hospitals, rivers, and mountains. If you remember from our SS1 work, when we did introduction with to geography, we said it involves the study of man and his immediate environment. So geological surveys has to do with man and his immediate environment. Everything that has to do with man. You go to the market, you use roads, you go to schools. There are different types of schools from the elementary level right to the tertiary level. We have hospitals. We have rivers that provide us with um, water. We have mountains. Anything that has to do with man and his settlement is considered under geological surveys. Number six, military surveys. These involve the survey of land, air, and water bodies to provide adequate information for the purpose of defense. Now, this has to do with our military personnel, especially when you have a um, country that is not landlocked, like Nigeria, we have the Atlantic Ocean on the south. So we're not a landlocked country. Like we said earlier, a landlocked country is a country that is surrounded by land and has no direct access to the sea. Nigeria is not a landlocked country. Therefore, we have the Navy, we have the Air Force for our airspace, and we have the Army for the land. So under military surveys, they need to survey both the land and the water bodies so that our military people will be equipped in order to be able to defend Nigeria's sovereignty. Number seven, we have cadastral survey. What is cadastral survey? These are survey works based on the preparation of plans indicating and defining the legal property boundaries. Now, these surveys help us to be able to say, okay, this is where my piece of land starts and this is where it ends. So that you don't have people fighting over a piece of land. We've heard of both national and international cases of land boundary disputes. So when adequate cadastral surveys have been done, you do not have such problem. However, to be more specific, when it has to do with cadastral survey in Nigeria, we have what we commonly call the GRA, the Government Reserved Area. If you own a piece of land in the GRA, you have, and your land has been properly documented, you find out that there was a survey that was done by the government. Your land documents will come with a plan or a um, drawing on paper that shows you exactly where your land is located and the neighbor's land. And they plant what we call beacons, showing you the boundary between your land and the next land. This helps to prevent land disputes. The next thing we'll be looking at is types of surveying. We have six types of surveying. We have chain surveying, traverse surveying, aerial surveying, triangulation surveying, plane table surveying, and hydrographic surveying. We'll be looking at this surveying during the course of our lesson. However, we'll be stopping here today but before we go, let's take a brief review of what we have done. 
we were able to define some terms. We were able to define land and surveying, and we were able to define surveying. And we said land survey is a process by which measurement of land is made and then represents such measurements by tables, plans, or layouts for specific purposes. So this involves the measurement of land. And we said land is the uh, part of the Earth's crust that is not covered by water. So when you take these measurements, you have to put them in either tables plans on or layouts and we're able to look at a picture of what a table and a plan looked like. We're also able to see a land surveyor taking measurements with his tools. After that we looked at the importance of land surveying. We said they include the area of land that is the land needed for either markets or schools or gardens we also talked about the position of construction where we said land survey helps to determine which position that a construction work will be set. We also talked of production of maps. We talked about how a land, land survey helps in the production of maps so that the features are wherever they're supposed to be in the right measurements. We also said that the positions of certain features are accurately placed on maps because of land surveying and we talked about feasibility studies where we said feasibility studies is the studies you carry out so that you're able to know whether your construction work will go as planned and number six we talked of land security where we talked of the certificate of occupancy that is the legal document that proves that your ownership of the piece of land you are laying claim to after we looked at the importance of land survey, we looked at the branches of land survey. And we said there are seven branches. We talked of topographic survey, which has to do with the Earth's features. We now talked of engineering survey, especially as it has to do with construction from the beginning to the end. We now talked of geodetic survey which has to do with high accuracy and the use of positioning systems, the global positioning systems, to give us high accuracy in whatever work we're doing. And then number four, we talked about geological surveys, where we said it has to do with study of features that are found within the crust, which includes types of soil, water table, and mineral content of such soil. And then we talked of geographical survey, where we said geography has to do with the study of man and his environment. And anything that has to do with man and his environment is studied in a true geological surveys. Number six, we talked of the military surveys. And we said the military surveys involves the survey of land, air, and water bodies by our military um, body personnel so that it helps them to be able to adequately defend our national integrity and finally we talked of cadastral survey which help you to prove ownership of land that you have so this is what we're able to do today if you want to go for further studies we have reference materials for you but before that i'm giving you an assignment to take home it goes this way. Number one, define land survey. Define land survey. Number two, list four branches of land survey. List four branches of land survey. Number three, list five importance of land surveying. List five importance of land surveying. For the purpose of further studies, we have reference for you. We have the Essential Geography for Senior Secondary School by O.A. Iwana. And of course, we have Wikipedia. Your senior students, we believe that you have a command of the internet. Use it for your studies. When you're done with your assignments and you want to submit it to me, you can reach me through text message, you can call me, or through WhatsApp on the number 
0801621602. I take it again, 0802621602. I remain your geography teacher, Wazy Jeremiah Akos. Remember, stay home, stay safe, keep learning. Corona is real. Thank you and bye-bye.